Hi everyone, I'm Tina Trevino for Latin Biz Today, and today I'm excited to have Lynette Cardi on with us. She is the Director of Inclusion and Community Engagement for PGA. So welcome Lynette, happy to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Tina. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. So why don't you first tell us a little bit about your background, and that can include, you know, your family, where you grew up. Uh, your background education. Just give us a little bit of uh, background info on you. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. So um, I'm a Connecticut native, not too far from you in New York. And um, I'm a first generation on both sides of my, my family. My mother is Cuban. My father is Jamaican. And of course, we came here for a better life. So um, my parents came right before I was born. And I grew up right here in Windsor, Connecticut. I went to the University of Connecticut for undergraduate school and Western New England College up in Massachusetts to get my MBA. And from there, um, I became an international language certified flight attendant with Delta Airlines. So I'm really thankful for that opportunity that I've had to sort of travel the world and get to know different cultures and people and food, which is my favorite thing. And then um, I met my husband on a flight I uh, was married for about nine years. I divorced and I moved back home to Connecticut. Everybody always runs back to the bosom of their mom and dad, right? So I was one of those people. And um, from there, I really got into, you know, writing, which is one of my passions that I love. And so I was writing for the Hartford Current. And I spent a, quite a bit of time as the vice president of a marketing firm. I've uh, worked in social work. Um, I spent eight years as a senior director for the Village for Families and Children. But the most time that um, I would say my, my career was dedicated to was number one, being a TV host with NBC, uh, the local affiliate um, in Connecticut. And I love producing shows and being the host of the show. And uh, I did that for about 11 and a half years. And meanwhile, my full-time gig was with the Connecticut State Department of Education, working in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion, mostly with educators and administrators. So that's sort of me in a snapshot. What was your first experience like playing golf? Wow, um, that's a story in itself, right? Because it's funny that I went to school, I went to a private school for high school right on a golf course and I never played. But, you know, when I was in grad school, I met a guy that I had a big crush on. And uh, our professor that day asked a group of us if we would like to go out and play some golf with him. All expenses covered. And I was like, yes, I want to go. Not really because the game really interests me because I had a crush on this guy and he was going, right? So I head out there with them and it was the experience of a lifetime. And to make a long story short, I did really well my first time out. No one believed that that was my first time. I did so well. I think I, I came in second out of the group of nine of us. But, um, you know, I fell in love right there on the course. Not with the guy, but with the <laughs> game, right? With the game. Because the game tells you everything. The game tells you everything about people. It tells you, you know, if they're patient, if they're not patient, if they cheat, if you know, you, you learn everything about somebody while you're out there on the golf course. And so I really fell in love with the game and all that it had to offer. And so that was a powerful first experience for me. And I'll never, I'll never forget it. The next time I played, oh, I proved that I didn't know anything about the game. It was awful. It was awful. I just, I still hear, you know, I hate, I hate it when people say, just pick up your ball. Just pick it up. <laughs> I won't swing at it anymore, I promise. But it's a pretty challenging game, but it's so much fun. Are there other sports that you enjoy that maybe kind of, uh, you know, led you to liking golf? Like, would you like individual sports or, you know, competitive sports or team sports? I love all sports, but my favorites are probably going to be at the top of my list, um, Pelota Basque, which is from Basque country of Spain, but my grandfather played in Cuba. In America, they call it highlight. It is the oldest sport in the world, the fastest sport in the world, of one of the only two that you could play with your right hand. And I became fascinated watching it as a kid growing up, and I love it. I've never played it. I have gone out onto a court a couple of times, but I'm no good at it. Um, 
if I had to play again, which I did in college, I played some intramural softball, which I really enjoy quite a bit. My mom used to be a volleyball player and lover, and that was big in our family. We had a little volleyball net out in the back of our yard. But um, now I've grown to be much of a football fan. Ever since college and being a cheerleader, and I just love football. There's something about football that I like a lot. Yeah, I love college football. That's my favorite, actually. So, um, let's talk about when you first began with PGA. So when was that? And, um, you know, what does your role now entail from the beginning into where you are now today? Uh, that's a huge question, but I'll, I'll keep it brief. So um, I'm coming up on five years in July, which has been just fabulous. I feel like my role sort of brings together a nice intersection of all of my skill set when it comes to public speaking and writing and, you know, traveling to deliver education and skill development sessions to the 29,000 PGA professionals, as well as, you know, the, the staff of 300 here at headquarters. And, um, you know, it's, it's a way for us to roll out how we, you know, manifest making inclusion our commitment when it comes to especially the five dimensions of diversity that being gender sexual orientation race and culture generational differences and ability and you know those are five pillars which we'll talk about a little bit later i'm sure has really magnified how we elevate that and we make that come to life in each one of those areas and it's been tremendous tell us a little bit about what you do in this area of education and or development for PGA? Sure. Um, that's one of our primary areas, and it's and I have two favorites out of all of them, um, which is, you know, our five pillars, I'll just tell you very quickly, our education and skill development, workforce diversification, community engagement, vendor slash supplier inclusion, and governance. But I really believe that education and skill development is probably one of our most important pillars. It's our opportunity to show our commitment to, you know, the, the PGA professionals, whether they be at the chapter, the section, or the national levels, on how we want them to be equitable in their practices because we know that golf is a game of invitation. And so how welcoming is that invitation? So I'm pretty proud of, um, I've done probably over 40 customized um, sessions with different topics and, you know, starting with the foundational concepts and sort of scaffolding that learning up so that they are now at the tough topics and really being able to engage in being comfortable with uncomfortable topics and exercising their dialogue muscle. And, you know, that started with sort of creating a safe environment and having them know who I am. And it's been great. You know, most of those have happened in person, but since COVID, I had to make that pivot like everyone else. And so these virtual sessions are great. And although I don't like the virtual as much because I'm not able to partake in the exercises which sort of bring those concepts to life for people. I have relied heavily on sort of video clips and storytelling and it's provided for more people to engage. So typically I'll go out and I'll have 150 people in the audience. Now I can actually get 300 on a virtual, right? So, you know, I think the PGA really is stellar in what we do in terms of making sure that young people know that there's a place for them in the business of golf. So you don't necessarily have to pick up a golf club, that golf is open to everyone. So whether you, you know, have a, a love for finance or marketing or communications or um, event planning, whatever it is, we have it at the PGA for you. And so we've established some really um, great partnerships with, other organizations. Um, we participate in the Thurgood Mar Marshall uh, College Fund. We're partners with Jopwell and Black Girls Golf and Rise and Sigma Pi Phi and Latina Girls Golf and, uh, and so on. You know, the Women in Golf Foundation. We make sure that 
the word is out there. We advertise in a lot of magazines, including, you know, Black College Today, Black Enterprise, Latin Business Today, uh, the African American Golfers Digest, and many, many more so that we continue to drive home that message that there are college scholarships, there's internships, there's fellowships. All of these things happen under the umbrella of PGA Works. And we want them to know that, you know, you don't have to swing a club to actually work in the business of golf. That's important, I think. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. I never even realized that before until I started to speak to more people from PGA. You know, there's so many opportunities if you love the sport, but don't know thing one about it, like me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but exactly. A lot of opportunity. The other pillar, of course, is, you know, vendor inclusion. Um, some people might know it as supplier inclusion. And I love the way that we are really committed to embracing those smaller businesses. So it could be a minority owned business, like a women owned business, a veteran owned business, um, somebody um, who ha might have a disability or LGBT owned business. And during our PGA championships, what we do is prior to the championship, we hold a matchmaking event and we invite these small business owners and, and introduce them to the tier one companies so that these smaller tier two and tier three companies have the opportunity to get a piece of the pie in the communities where we have our championships. And that is significant, right? That's yeah. uh, just one of the ways that we sort of give back to the community. And, you know, these alliances have happened through, you know, the National Veteran Business Owned Association, the National Lesbian and Gay Chamber, uh, the Charlotte LGBT, the Pan-Asian American Chamber of Commerce, and so on. So there's a lot of groups that we work with to make sure that we can get these companies to the table and make those connections for them. And then lastly, I have to talk about my favorite. I can't let you go before I do that. So community engagement, which is a large part of what we do. Um, and we're really committed to, you know, engaging sort of those underrepresented and under-resourced consumers in the game. When I started with the PJ of America and started traveling, I didn't know how many smaller organizations out there truly love golf. And so we try to support them in any way we can, whether it's going and participating in their events, it could be financial, but it's just having that collaboration with them. And it's, it's fabulous. It is fabulous. Some of the organizations that we've partnered with are uh, Black Girls Golf, the Women in Golf Foundation, Golf Women Mean Business, the Arizona Hispanic Chamber of Golf. That's just to name a few. It's large. Sigma Pi Phi, Kappa Alpha Psi, uh, Black Enterprise. You know, all of these groups, we make sure that we have that connection with them and support their love of golf. You definitely seem like a very outgoing person. So I can see why that is an important part for you. And that's probably a big part of why you're in this role that you have. So <laughs> Thanks. It's what I love to do. Absolutely what I love to do. Lynette, tell us a little bit more about the LEAD program, its curriculum, and the specific goals of the LEAD program. So PG LEAD was designed really to develop a deep bench of PGA members who aspire to ascend through the volunteer leadership ranks of the association. So if you look at leadership at the PGA of America, it is not very diverse. It's sort of that vortex of sameness, apart from us just having our first woman president, who's Susie Whaley, who we all love, but pretty much it's all white males. And so what could we do to sort of change it and provide a deep bench of PGA members who are ready to sort of take on these leadership roles. So PGA LEAD is a two-year program. It's a curriculum-based program that provides, you know, a curated set of courses that PGA members take that prepares them to be leaders within the association. So many of those topics cover uh, everything from public speaking to personal branding and, you know, social media and anything that, you know, it takes to become a, a real rounded leader. They learn Robert's Rules of Order and how to run, you know, committee meetings and they learn all the governance structure of the PGA of America, 
of what happens, you know, at the annual meeting during the election and what that protocol process is about. And just, it's a wonderful, robust two-year program. Uh, they apply to the program uh, annually. We select 15 of the best. And um, it's been great. We are now up to cohort six. They just started in January. And uh, cohort four graduated. Uh, they had their commencement in November at the annual meeting. So cohort five is in there starting their second year. And cohort six just started their first year. So it's pretty neat. I'm just... I'm really happy with it, and the participants absolutely love it. So when we started, there were zero leaders, and now we have one section president. We have three section vice presidents. We have 11 that are on section boards, and we have 19 on national committees. That is just, that data is tremendous, right? It's a 40 45.3% success rate in as little as four years because you can't count the last two cohorts. They're still in class. So it's just, it's been amazing and it's an exemplary program and it shows that if you really are about sort of cultivating change and wanting change to happen, it will happen. You're committed to it. What would you say with that percentage of people who have come out and gone into, you know, high level leadership roles? What are some of your favorite success stories out of some of those people? Oh, wow. Um, so there are many success stories, but I guess um, some of my favorites are those who run for office and they don't get elected the first time and they don't let that deter them that they run again you got to be unstoppable. You know, you've got to commit and know that if you're in it, you're in it for the long haul. And so I really admire and respect those who have run repeatedly um, until they have finally gotten office. What role does PGA lead play in fostering leadership? You know, I think specifically it's about bringing those diverse voices into the process. You know, no matter what you talk about, diversity helps. It makes things better. And any company will tell you that once they diversify, their ROI goes up. Why? Because you have diverse minds at the table. And so, you know, that has been a tremendous benefit, I believe, to the PGA of America is in having these diverse individuals at the table. And, and that means diverse in every capacity diverse in, in color, diverse in thought, diverse in gender, diverse in the communities that they belong to, such as the LBGTQ community or those who have disabilities. Because oftentimes when you think about something, you only think about it through the lens of which you're given. They bring another perspective to the table and I think that that's just tremendously valuable. As a dual heritage female in the golf industry, can you tell me a little bit about what that means to you and maybe some of your own personal experiences or challenges? I, I think it's more unique and powerful than being a challenge. I think that my race and my culture has really been instrumental in shaping who I am, how I grew up, um, the things that I learned, my, what my professional career has provided me and, and my educational background. And all the varied experiences that I've sort of had along the way, but they've all converged to be what I would call totally beneficial, right? Um, we say in Spanish, todo está con sabor, right? That is what's <laughs> given me that flavor um, in being who I am and in what I bring to the table. I think we each have our own perspectives, and I've always been eager to not only share my own perspective, but in hearing other people's perspectives and building relationships, because really, that's what this work is all about, yeah. building relationships. Yeah. yeah, it definitely opens conversations that people have a comfort level to speak to you about their own unique experience and maybe find a, a common ground, yeah. even in your differences, right? So. Exactly, exactly.